Hi everyone, Phil Pendlebury here, and I hope you're having a super mega large day. So, Waves have done it again. Another NX plugin for your headphones. Um, this time it's the Germano Studios in New York City. Uh, fantastic studio I've actually visited myself a little while ago. Um, and I'm going to take you through that today. Nice and short because we've done this before with some of the other NX plugins. So I'm going to do a little mix and uh, show you a couple of you know other little bits and bats and just take you through how it sounds. So of course, um, as usual with the NX series, please put your headphones on. It's vital that we're wearing headphones for this, otherwise it will make no sense whatsoever. All right, so without further ado, let's get on with it. Okay, so uh, headphones on, and here we are, Cubase 11 up and running, and uh, I've loaded up the uh, Germano plugin. I've also got some stems from a mix, um, ongoing mix that I did a little while ago. In fact, it's finished, uh, the song's finished, but this, this is an old, old version which I exported the stems. Anyway, you don't need to really know uh, too much more about that. So the plan is today, it's a horrible sound, it's a bit edgy and a bit, a bit nasty. So the plan is today is just to quickly go through the mix using the uh, Germano Studios, show you some of the features and then uh, play it back and let's see how it sounds. Also, I've got another little project which has got some voice and some bits and bats on it um, to demo all that. Okay, so we've got the plugin loaded up. Um, first, as usual, I need to point out the crucial thing about where this plugin goes in your setup. So, because this is emulating the sound of the room in our headphones, we need to put it at the end of our chain, but it shouldn't be in the area where you're going to export your mix from. So here I've got it on my Master 2 bus after, um, after my usual uh, townhouse bus compressor, which is doing very little at all. So here I've got it there. But normally it would be, for example, in Cubase, it would be in your control room, um, in the headphone section of your control room, which means that when you come to doing your export or your render, if you'd like to call it that, you won't hear the effect of the Germano plugin. And that's the same for all the NX plugins. We don't want to hear the effect when we're rendering. It's only when we're wearing headphones, we're using it to emulate the sound of the room when we're mixing. And to give you a clue of what your mix might sound like with other setups, other speakers and so on. And that's what's so cool about the NX. Also, incidentally, if you are using uh, Sound ID Reference, uh, for example, then that should go uh, last in the chain. Right. So here we go, I've got the NX loaded up and it is actually disabled at the moment. So I'll just play you the intro to this track. We're not going to play too much of it, I'll just play the intro and then we'll enable the plugin and uh, take it from there. Okay, so that's roughly how the track sounds. As you can hear, it's a little bit edgy and it does really need mixing. Um, just to tell you a little bit about the um, Germano uh, New York Studios, this particular plugin, I think it's Studio One, it looks like Studio One. And in there, we've got three sets of speakers that are working uh, with the plugin. So we've got the GA2, which is Germano Acoustics own speakers, I believe, G uh, called the GA2. Uh, we've got a pair of NS10Ms, which uh, don't have a sub. Um, in fact, neither do the GA2, as far as I know, as far as you can tell. And then you've got the Exigy 
um, acoustics. Um, Exigy Custom 4-Way with a dual sub. So they definitely have a sub and you can definitely hear it. So let's get on with it. Um, I'm just going to start off with a little loop of the drums from this track. And we'll turn the plug-in on and you can hear how it sounds. Don't forget, headphones on please. Alright, so that's the GA2s, here's the NS10Ms. And here's the big exegies. Okay, so you can hear there straight away uh, the NS10s obviously with no sub, uh, quite light on the bottom end, quite midi as NS10Ms are known to be. The GA2s are kind of, you know, mid-range and the big exigies you can hear all that bottom end coming in uh, when you switch to those. So let's just quickly go through some of the controls here in case you haven't seen the NX series before. So obviously here we've got the buttons which enable you to change uh, between the different speaker emulations. Here we have the studio rotate button which enables you to kind of move your head around. I'll show you that in a minute. And we can reset that back to zero so you're looking right down the center. Uh, we've got ambience which increases some of the kind of general ambience from the room, it speaks for itself. An overall level control. We've got the head tracking which I do actually have but I'm not going to use it today. Uh, because it really, uh, I can, you know, emulate the head tracking by just moving this button, uh, moving this knob, should I say. Um, the settings, which is, again, if you're using the head tracker, uh, that brings that little dialogue up. Uh, we now have a nice little warning as well, telling us that if we close the head tracker application, then it won't track your head anymore, uh, which is nice. So remember, if you are using the head tracker, uh, you just minimize this, you don't actually close it, but we're going to close it because we're not doing that today. So that's that. Calibrate will um, also bring everything back to, to the center if you're using head tracking. So it's a similar thing to um, what the zero degree button does here except for it does it with your actual head tracker. So if you're facing to one side, for example, and you hit the calibrate button, then that will bring your head, uh, that will kind of mark that position as if it's in the center. Headphone EQ, there's a few emulations here, not necessary today. Um, I have my own set up in uh, Sound ID reference, and you can use these or you can use your own. It's, it's totally up to you, but I'm not going to use it today because I don't know what headphones you're going to be listening to this on. Um, head modelling, this is vital, you need to measure your head. Um, we'll have a look in the instructions about how to do that. You basically measure uh, the size of uh, around your head and the size from ear to ear and uh, save it as a measurement and it does make quite a large difference. So that's the controls. So we've had a quick listen and let me just go back and I'm going to explain one more thing. I know we do this every time, but let's just do this anyway. It's important. Why do we need a plug-in like this? Okay, so well, if you're like a lot of us these days are having to do a lot of work in headphones, um, you probably notice that sometimes when, you, when you've finished your mix, that things don't quite sit right when you listen to them on another set of speakers. Now there's a whole debate about, well, everybody's listening to music in headphones these days, so what should we be doing? And I've talked about that in another video. But for the, for the sake of this, let's just look at it on the normal plane. Why do we need it? So what we want to do is we want to emulate the sound coming from those speakers. Normally when you're listening to music in your studio, you've got a speaker 
on either side of you. And in certain places, they can be higher, lower, whatever. But if you're, say, listening to only the left channel, if this is my left, if you're listening to that, your right ear is still picking up the signal from the left channel. Now, when you've got headphones on, your, your right ear is hearing none of the left channel. And this is why mixes can go a little bit askew when you're using headphones, because you're just not getting the same kind of ambience that you're getting from a set of speakers. So the idea of plugins like this is that it's going to give you that kind of cross feed and, and make you feel like you're in that room. So levels might be different. Certainly the stereo image is going to be a little bit different from what it would normally be. So I've said all that before, and I'm sure a lot of you guys know that, but you can't iterate it enough. This is only for listening. It's not meant for rendering or bouncing or exporting as your final mix. It's for listening. It's for monitoring. Um, you could use it for that if you want to use it for a creative purpose. But the idea is it's only for monitoring. So don't forget, turn it off before you export. Or if you can, like with Cubase and Uendo, use the awesome control room, which means that you can put it in there. And then you know that when you export, you're not going to get that affected signal. Right, let's get back to it. So let's have a listen to what the ambience does. We'll play a little bit of the drums again. Uh, let's move over to this part. Quickly disable. Now you can hear when I disable the plugin that there's a lot of bottom end. You can hear that the the actual signal seems to spread further from ear to ear, and that's because of exactly what I was just talking about earlier on. So let's enable once again, and I'm going to leave it enabled, I think, now for, for a little while until we get to the end. Okay, so the GA2s. Now don't forget we've got the ambience control. And you can hear that that just gives you a little bit more of the sense of being in that room. I don't particularly like to have that on. I have it as low as possible with all these plugins because I don't particularly want to hear extra ambience. I just want that little bit of a fill in and a little bit of that EQ. So let's um, let's just we've already had drums actually with all three speakers. So let's just bring in um, some uh, some effects and bass and uh, have a listen to that. And I will just have a play with the controls while we're listening, moving from speaker to speaker. I'll also give you the, you know, the impression of moving my head around. Um, and if you close your eyes, you can kind of imagine uh, that you're turning your head. And it's actually quite freaky. It's quite realistic. Um, by the way, I should point out that this comes in a 5.1 version as well, which is super useful. Right, here we go. Here's drums and bass. Okay, and the exegies. All right, so why would you need the rotation feature? Well, it's just handy, and, and to be honest, uh, it really comes into its own if you're mixing 5.1 or even 7.1. Um, that's in a whole other video, um, because you can just, if you, if you move your head around, especially with the NX device on, you really do feel like, sometimes you actually feel like the monitors have been left on. 
So let's bring in some more music before we get to the main um, thing, which is just to do a quick mix and see what we think. So bring in the guitars and the piano, and I'm going to go through the three speakers again. Um, we'll unmute, we'll turn the plug-in off first. Um, So you can definitely hear there the exegies have got a lot of bottom end which is what you would expect from a big pair of speakers like that the ns10s high to mid and um, the germano acoustics i had to look that up then the germano acoustics are kind of a little bit mid-range i feel like maybe you know they could you could do with a bit of sub in there but I totally understand why it was done like this because a lot of people like to listen without the sub and then when you go to those exegies you can really hear that that bottom end um, so what I'm going to do now, uh, without messing around too much longer, so I want to keep this as short as possible. Um, we're just going to, what I'm going to do is pull all the faders down and do a rough mix of these stems, uh, maybe add a little bit of EQ, um, and then what we'll do is at the end we'll turn it off so that you can hear it on your speakers and see how the mix has, has you know, progressed, how it, how, it, how it fits. So here we go. Um, yeah. So starting from the top, I'm going to leave the uh, I'm going to leave with the NS10s on, and we'll. I should point out here, of course, I'm not going to do a full mix, otherwise we'll be sat here, you know, as you know, for a, for a couple of hours or whatever, or even more. Uh, I'll just have a little mess with EQ um, and possibly maybe one compressor here or there, but n nothing glamorous. So it's just about the EQ and where things are going to sit, really. That's, that's all it is. Um, so don't worry, we're not going to be sat here doing a full mix. Right.
no noise from teachers here and parents there our profiles made our cross to bear yes we will lead and sometimes fall and yet we'll notice not at all you see we're rare we never crawl we're ones that stand like poppy tall creative flair and a drive to change the way that life's been arranged so now we have got your attention we're taking exception to the state of the nation no passive aggression no hostile rejection no more novel inventions we're taking exception so now we have got your attention with exception to the state of the nation no passive aggression no hostile rejection no more novel inventions we're taking exception it's been arranged so now we have got your attention we're taking exception to the state of the nation no passive aggression no hostile rejection no more novel inventions we're taking exception world's in trouble you've heard her shout we're needed now and there's no doubt stop greenhouse gas no need for fumes it will be hard Yeah, okay, so I'm really liking the sound of those um, exeges. Uh, nice deep bottom end, showing off some areas that I might not hear normally, even with my actual uh, studio monitors, which you can't see, but they are there, I assure you. Um, also, of course, with the headphones on, um, you tend to also miss some of that, you know, bottom end, depending on how you've got your headphones set up. So yeah, I'm liking it a lot, especially the exegies. The NS10Ms were quite clinical. Um, not a lot of bottom end, but enabling you to kind of hone in on other areas. So what I'm going to do now, I'll play a bit of the track. Uh, let's go just to the end. I don't want to bore you with this track. So I'm just going to play a bit more of the actual track itself, flipping through the speakers, and then we'll disable it, and maybe we can have a listen on the speakers themselves and see how the mix is translated. Speaking Inside and out That's interesting how when we switched from the GA2 to the NS10s there, how the bass that I've just adjusted 
seem to kind of almost disappear. So I guess you'd have to be a little bit careful with that. And some of that will probably be to do with the actual frequency of the, of the bass itself. The song's in E, by the way. <laughs> Okay, that's not perfect. Like I said, there's uh, a lot of kind of potential work that needed doing on this, but we'll play that again now and we will disable the plugin completely. So this should now be listened to um, on your main monitors or on, on your headphones if, if you wish. But really, ideally, what we're looking at here is does this mix translate onto your main speakers as opposed to headphones? So we bypass the effect. Inside and now. I think it's passable. Obviously, this is not the ideal test because this is stems, so there's some mixing kind of already been done. Uh, but yeah, love it as usual. Find it, I will find it very useful along with all the other NXs. Right, so the last thing um, we're going to do now, I'll just, uh, I've got another little project which has got some other bits and bats on it. So we'll just quickly load that up and see how it sounds um, on, a, on a spoken voice and you know some some other couple of little bits okay so i've got my um little spoken voice sample loaded up and we'll have a listen to that i'll play it first with the plugin disabled and then uh, you can have a listen with the different speaker sets and also with the ambience because you can really hear that uh, when you're using a, a spoken voice let's give it a go Isosphere adjusts the directionality and frequency response of the modelling to compensate for coloration and optimise rejection for a range of different isolation filters. When Isosphere is enabled, the polar pattern is fixed and off-axis correction controls are disabled. Isosphere adjusts the directionality and frequency response of the modelling to compensate for coloration and optimise rejection for a range of different isolation filters. When isosphere is enabled, the polar pattern is fixed and off-axis correction controls are disabled. Isosphere adjusts the directionality and frequency response of the modelling to compensate for coloration and optimise rejection for a range of different isolation filters. When isosphere is enabled, the polar pattern is fixed and off-axis correction controls are disabled. Isosphere adjusts the directionality and frequency response of the modelling to compensate for coloration and optimise rejection for a range of different isolation filters. When isosphere is enabled, the polar pattern is fixed and off-axis correction controls are disabled. Isosphere adjusts the directionality and frequency response of the modelling. OK, I think we've heard enough of the uh, vocal loop and the frequency response and so on and so forth. Um, so you get the idea. Not particularly useful for a, for a spoken voice, I don't think, but you could hear the ambience control making a big difference and giving you that feeling that you're in the room. Um, of course, there are all the other um, NXs available, the regular NX, Abbey Road, Ocean Way, Nashville, uh, Chris Lord Alge, um, although somebody said it should be Algae, <laughs> Chris Lord, CLA, that'll do. Uh, that's it for now, folks. Hope you found this a little bit useful. I do suggest getting uh, getting this one. It's going to be another one added to your arsenal, um, especially if you're mixing and mastering in headphones. Cheers for now and uh, hope to see you on the next one. Mm -hmm.